Well, we're back at it. We got about another two inches of rain yesterday and another inch the day before that. It just keeps raining on us. Dad ran that one till about three o'clock in the morning and it ran out of gas and I think he ran out of gas and just decided to call it for the night. But we got it fired back up this morning. This tractor is getting low on fuel so I think he shut that down. He's bringing some fuel out here now. I gotta get some gas put in the M. We're just gonna keep pumping water. Got everything fueled up what i thought i'd do in this video is i had a couple questions on how the pumps work how the ditch system works so i think that's what i'm going to do for this video i'm just going to kind of explain the overall system and how it works because i've had some questions and i've had some comments where people are like well why don't you do this but then we're actually already doing that but i haven't really explained it that well so we're going to talk about how this whole system works how we drain our field how much land how much water all that stuff all right so i figured i'd start at the ditch end the farthest end from the pump and work my way to the pump and kind of explain how this works so this wheat field right here this corn field the next corn field so that's all our ground that's on this side of the pump some of that drains into one ditch where the Kubota pumps and some of it drains into the ditch where the m pumps and then everything that we have across the road drains into the ditch where the m pumps so this right here is one of our ditches so these fields right here this one is about 40 acres and this one is i don't know 30 or something they drain into this ditch there's some field tile there's some surface drains there's some catch basins the reason why we have so many ditches in this area is because our ground is pretty sandy and back in the day the field tile technology was not good enough to handle sand it would just fill in and it might last a year might last two years but then basically you wasted your money on it so they dug ditches they probably went in found the lowest point of the field dug the ditch through there hoping all the water would run to the ditch they put surface drains in you know they might have some tile in certain areas of the field that may have worked may have not worked i know there's some really really old clay tile in these fields that who knows if they even work they cause more problems than anything now but that is the starting point of the water so we get a whole bunch of rain it gets in the ditch one other thing i should mention before i go this ditch is right next to the main drainage ditch so this is a little beaver creek i talked about that in the last video you would think that it'd be easier to just drain from there right through here into the ditch because we're only about 75 80 feet away but you would be pushing water uphill to do that so the water has to go that way away from the ditch and around and just kind of go on the scenic route to get to the main drainage ditch so we're just kind of driving along this ditch showing you kind of the path the water takes all right now once the water gets to this point we have a t intersection right here this is a dam they used to flood these ditches and flood irrigate uh, it's kind of cool. My grandpa actually won the National Corn Growers Yield Contest for corn back in the day, which is crazy. But he did it by flood irrigating. That's another story. So this is a dam. We don't use it anymore, but basically you would put boards in there and you could pump the water back in. We actually have a well down there that you could fill these ditches with. We're not talking about irrigation. We're talking about drainage. So culvert goes underneath, 
And then the water goes down this ditch, which splits these two fields right down the middle, goes down there, and we're getting closer to the pump at this point. All right, so the sunlight's probably not doing me any favors, but now I'm standing at the opposite end of that ditch I just showed you. So the water makes its way from that end down by the dam over to here, and then it turns, goes that way towards the pump. So the water has basically gone from that far corner of the field all the way around the field and through here. Then you got this other field that also drains in. So this part of the drainage system drains basically a hundred acres of ours. It might take some water from the neighbors and you know, here and there, but for the most part, our hundred acres drains into this part of the system. Then over on this side, we have the road ditch, which is really, really deep. This one drains a lot more ground. It drains my 24 acres, the 160 across the road, and then another 50 acres of mine, 40 across the road, some of the neighbors. So let's see, let me do some quick math. I can't do math in my head, I need my calculator. So we got 55 plus 160 plus 24. Um, okay, so it drains about 240 acres of our own, plus we get a lot of the neighbors. So this side drains probably I'm just gonna guess and say a thousand acres comes through here. So there's a lot of water coming through this ditch. All right, so we finally made it to the pump. This is the end of the line for the water and we gotta get it out of here. So under normal circumstances, this was one thing that people had questions on. They were asking, why did you block off the end of the ditch and put a pump in? Wouldn't it make more sense to just let it flow into the creek? Well, we didn't exactly block it off. Under this pump, you can't see it right now because the water's too high. There's a culvert with a cap. So when we don't have flooding rains, the water drains naturally through that culvert and into the Little Beaver Creek. The problem with that is when we get a big rain and all the water comes at once, we need to get rid of it quicker. That's why we have these pumps. I'm not exactly sure the rating on this pump, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around six to 8,000 gallons per minute. This one's not as big as the one that we run with the M. So just to recap, let me get up higher so you can see. All right, so just to recap, we started out over there and we basically went all the way around this 40 acre field. We went down that ditch to the T at the dam, across this way, then up this ditch to the pump, through the pump or the culvert into the creek. And that's how it drains. Now you may be wondering, why are there two ditches so close together? We've got this ditch here, and this ditch here. Well, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history lesson. I would have to ask somebody when this all went down, but before my grandpa owned the ground across the road, my great grandpa Wilson owned this farm, this 100 acres. He owned 360 acres, that's what he farmed. This was part of it. That ditch used to not be there. The ditch with the Kubota pump, it used to not be there. This field extended all the way to this ditch and everything drained into that ditch. So the people that owned the farm across the road apparently never wanted to run the pump because they owned the pump at that time and that kind of made my great grandpa pretty upset and from what i understand he was kind of hard to get along with when he was upset so he got mad and said all right if you don't want to run the pump i'm going to dig my own ditch drain it all into that put a pump in and run it myself and you guys can do whatever you want so that's why we have two ditches so close together my grandpa arsenal so my dad's dad he bought the farm across the road now we own both pumps it also helps us because that half of the farm drains to this ditch that half drains to this ditch we're not shoving all the water into one ditch and one pump so we lose a little bit of farm ground in between but it really helps us out when we get a flooding situation i hope all this makes sense what i want to do later in the video is get my drone up in the air and kind of trace out the path of all the ditches and kind of show you the path that the water takes to get to this point so another couple questions i guess that i could kind of uh, address some people are like well if you have to pump the water out why do you farm it why don't you just let it flood and make it a pond or whatever well this farm isn't that wet under normal circumstances we've gotten i'm gonna say eight inches of rain in the past well i guess in the past week now because it's thursday that's not normal rainfall when we get too much rain then this farm kind of becomes a swamp and it doesn't stay that way for long 
but it stays that way long enough that it can hurt the crops. This pump is not our only means of drainage, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's not like we have to pump this water in order to farm it. That would be kind of silly. I know there's places where they do that, but they're growing more high value crops and that's a whole different ball game. But this farm will drain on its own without pumps. But when we get a flooding rain, we just need to help it out a little bit. And that's why we have them. We're thankful we have them. We can move a lot of water in a hurry and save our crops. I hope that answers that question. Another question is, well, if it's not draining, why don't you do no-till? Why don't you do cover crops? Why don't you put tile in. We are changing our farming practices. We're going to more no-till, we're going to more cover crops, and it has improved our drainage. The problem is, when we get all this rain, we're at the bottom end of the ditch system. Everybody else's water comes through us. I'm not complaining, that's just, it's just the way it is. We basically have to get rid of everybody else's water first before we can drain our own. So, in order for those practices to work, we need to get the water to a manageable level. And one of my farms that drains through the M, that pump, I've been doing no-till for about five years, cover crops for a couple, and I've seen the benefits. That first three and a half inches of rain we got, it soaked in like nothing. There was water standing all around it, but not on that farm. Now that we've got eight inches, it's a little bit different story, but I've seen the benefits of the cover crops. We are doing that and it's helping. But like I said, when we get excessive rain, there's just not a whole lot you can do other than pump it and get rid of it. Sadie, come here. So I'm standing at the end of this ditch on the bridge. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a big culvert right there. That thing's massive. It's probably, I'm gonna say it's a 36 or 48 inch culvert that comes through with a big old gate on the end to keep the water from backing in. That's how the water drains normally. So I guess I said I'd talk about this side of the pumping system, but it basically works the same way. There's ditches over there. They come into this ditch, they come to the pump, they go through the culvert if they can. If not, we pump it out. The only main difference is a lot of neighbor's water drains into this side of the system, whereas the one with the Kubota, it's only our land that drains into it. If we get a big rain, we only drain ourselves. If we get a really big rain, like in 2015, where we got five inches every other day, then it will run across our field from the neighbors into our system, but that was a little extreme. Yeah, so this side drains about 240 acres of our own, combined with the other neighbors, probably about a thousand. I'm just guessing, it could be more, could be less. Comes all the way through here, and the little old M has to deal with it. She really does a pretty good job. You wouldn't think so, but she does. Last year when I did this video, we got a lot of arguments about the capacity of this pump. I'm not gonna get into that. The only thing I'm gonna say is, we are not trying to pump water at high pressure. We are trying to pump water at high volume. Volume doesn't take that much horsepower compared to pressure. If we were trying to push a thousand gallons per minute at 200 PSI, it would take way more horsepower than an M. We're trying to move about 10,000 gallons a minute at basically no pressure. The water is basically as high as the creek, so we're just pushing it in a straight line. We may be, we're maybe lifting it a foot at the most. So when that water is high, we can run this thing at a higher capacity. When it's low and we're trying to pull water from the bottom, which usually never happens, we don't usually have to do that, then the capacity is probably drastically reduced. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a mathematician, I'm sure there's all kinds of formulas you can figure, but the thing that I wanna show you is, that is a 24 inch culvert, and it is running just under half full of water, and it is really coming out of there. That's a lot of water. Now, some people were saying, well, you're only pushing in gallons per hour, not gallons per minute. Well, you can push 20,000 gallons per hour with a three inch pump, and that's an 18 inch pump. So we're pushing way more than 20,000 gallons per hour. We're pushing closer to like 10 to 12,000 gallons per minute. A lot of water coming out of there. So if you look at the pump from this side, you can see where the pipe comes up and it shoots across. So we're not lifting that water very much. And I know that's a big deal with pumps, is how much you have to lift it. If we had to lift it five feet, it'd take a lot more horsepower to get up to that capacity. And we probably wouldn't be able to get to that capacity. But when the water is this high, you're basically just moving it a little bit higher and shooting it across. So once it gets to that pipe, you're really not pushing it any longer. Another question I've had is 
People think these are screw pumps or auger pumps. They're actually not. There is a such thing as an auger pump or a screw pump. Basically, it works like a grain auger. There's a screw in there with lighting, and it just augers the water up, shoots it across. Those can move massive amounts of water. These are actually impeller pumps. Now, the impeller just looks like a boat propeller at the bottom. I actually have one in the shed. If I think about it, I'll show it to you. But there's a shaft that goes down, and it just spins that propeller, pushes the water up and out. Really simple. We actually tried to convert this pump over to a jack shaft and V-belt design to run off the PTO, just like that pump over there. But this pump is angled up higher, whereas that one is a little bit more flat. So I guess I was pretty little when they did that, but they said they couldn't keep the belts on the pulley on the pump because they're just too much of an angle. So we have another idea of how to do this. It's kind of complicated. I'm not gonna explain it right now, but it involves belts and pulleys and stuff. But we really wanna get this thing switched over to PTO drive. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is some improvements that we'd like to make to our pumping system. The system works, but it could be better. So since we only drain about 100 acres through this ditch, we can get this one empty pretty quick. So the idea that we have is to put an overflow spill pipe between these two ditches. So we can suck this ditch down in about a day, maybe a day and a half, get it low. We can open up that overflow pipe and divert some of the water from that ditch over to this ditch. That way you can use both pumps to pump the water out from that side of the road. But we also want that to have a valve or some kind of gate that we could shut because we don't want it open all the time because then all that water will just come through that pipe and go into this side of the system and flood this out even worse. So that's one idea that we've had. Obviously, we want to convert that pump over to a PTO drive. That way we can start it up, walk away from it. If we know a big rain's coming, we can just set it on there, walk away from it, get the ditches empty, and get kind of prepared for all that water to come through. This pump needs to be rebuilt. That would even help the situation even more because we could suck this ditch out even faster, open up the pipe, and get that water moving quicker. Another issue that we have is the culvert underneath here that my great grandpa put in when he dug this ditch is plastic culvert and it's starting to rot out or I don't know if animals are eating at it at the end but the cap at this end or the gate it doesn't really seal so if you shut this pump off this water from the big creek fills back in like faster than you can even pump it out so you basically have to keep this thing running all the time until the creek goes down so we really need to dig this up put in a bigger culvert that's not plastic so put steel in that way the gate will seal off and we don't have to worry about water backing in so in summary our plans we replace this culvert we rebuild that pump we convert that one to pto drive we put our spill pipe in so let's say they're calling for five inches of rain tomorrow we get these pumps on here we start them up we start getting these ditches as low as we can possibly get them before the rain gets here to make some room for that water once we get this one pumped out get it down we open up that spill pipe start shoving some water over here and then we have two pumps pumping the water from across the road into the ditch we can just stay ahead of it that much better all right so i thought i'd make these maps instead of taking the drone up i thought that might work a little bit better so these white squares are each of our fields and how many acres they are the blue line is the ditch and then you got the pump over here so this kind of shows the path of the water as it drains out of each one of those fields that's the pumping system, the first one that I talked about. Now we'll go to the next one. So this one is a little bit more elaborate. So once again, the blue line is the ditch, the red dot is the pump, but we have a lot more ditches feeding into our pumping system. So the white boxes are our fields. Everything else around us is not our fields, but as you can see, like down here, some of that water drains into our system even though it's not our ground. So this side of the road where the M pumps takes a lot more water than the other one. Now, when we zoom in here, this is kind of where our two pumps are. This one is the M, this one is where the Kubota is pumping. This is that first line that I showed you. And then this is across the road. So I talked about our idea of putting a spill pipe in right here. I'll just do a red line for that. So say we just put it right here. We have a gate there some kind of valve or something. This one is draining only 100 acres. We pump that down, get it dry. This one, which is pumping over 1,000 acres of water, once we get it dry, we open up this valve, divert some of that water over. Then we are pumping with two pumps, all of this water on this side, because this side's already dry. 
hope that all makes sense. All right, so I think I've pretty much talked that topic to death. So I hope that explains a little bit better how this whole pumping system works. The big thing I wanted to point out is that we don't always have to pump the water under normal, normal rainfall. It drains on its own through the culvert. It's not like we're always burning fuel just to be able to farm. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one.